Hey YouTube, Moose Cow here with my first customization video, just showing off a customization I have created um, to help help me with my games. So um, what are these? Well, if you've seen any of my recap videos uh, that I've made so far, you've probably seen at least one of these at some point. Um, well, they're cigar boxes, but how many of you can say that you have seen an Axis and Allies cigar box income tracker slash roundel storage container? <laughs> um, these are uh, some uh, turn trackers that I've made out of painter's sticks. So it's just a painter stick uh, filed down and uh, taped, off, taped off with some black gaff and I use some double-sided tape to reuse some old roundels that I don't use anymore since I have all these HBG roundels. So I initially, so that's, th this is something I just, I just kind of throw these in here um, to, since they, they fit in there relatively easy when, it, when it's closed and stuff. So um, uh, this is obviously uh, a 1940 turn tracker and this is a, for global, and then this is a uh, 42, global 42 turn tracker. So, uh, and then you got some moleskin, uh, some black moleskin. I got, I got sheets of those for work generally. And then you can just slide it around the board if you need to shuffle it out of the way. And I got the idea for this um, uh, after uh, playing with a, a friend who, uh, he just had his round, just had some extra roundels on the table, and then you know they were sliding, and just didn't, just didn't look nice. And I was like, you know, I bet you I can make like a solid thing to, you know, then you can move it out of the way easily. So uh, in terms of a turn tracker, um, let's see. Uh, in terms of how that works, see, I just use a twelve-sided die. So this is top of round one, you know, round one, uh, Russia's turn, round two, round one, Japan's turn, and you move, you move it as you play, and then you're like, what round are we on again? Okay, well, yeah, it's, it's round three, and it's, uh, you know, so, so yeah, just a simple little turn tracker. Um, and then, as for the income tracker uh, itself, the cigar box, so I initially got this idea, before I got the income tracker idea, I had the cigar box for years. Uh, that I acquired and I was using it for you know somebody a uh, close friend gave it to me and uh, uh, but you can get these from uh, any liquor store that sells cigar cigars too um, you can get so they'll either sell them for a couple bucks or the, or more than likely they'll just give them away because they can't really sell the boxes normally um, yeah so other, otherwise they're just they're just gonna junk them you know generally so um, yeah if you want to give a crack, give yourself a, a crack at trying to make one of these yourself. Um, the hardest part is finding the right kind of cigar box. And this one's from, uh, this, they're both, the, the, both of these are the same brand. Um, I don't smoke cigars, so I cannot speak on as to the quality of those cigar boxes. Oh, sorry, as to the cigars. Sorry, I can't speak on to the, as to the quality of the cigars. If they're actually good cigars, maybe cigar snobs, would laugh at this just because of the brand or whatever, but I don't care. Anyway, um, so yeah, they, uh, so I acquired this years ago, and the problem with that is from what I can tell with this company, they don't seem to make the cigar boxes like this anymore. So it's very difficult to find a cigar box that actually has these rows uh, in it already. And this is just a plastic like tray that um, uh, that you, you get the cigar box and this is already in there. Um, but more likely than not, um, you'll get a cigar box and it'll have, it won't have the, it'll still have this like, in the, this like plastic barrier thing, but it'll just be a smooth, flat, uh, interior, interior in there. It won't have the rows. Um, they do have a, the same company has a wooden box that has wooden rows, but they're a little wider than this. And, um, yeah, I had this box for years and I'm generally really good at repurposing things for finding alternate uses for them, you know. Um, and I came up with the idea because I want, you know, as I had started upgrading, as one does, upgrading their Access and Allies games <laughs> um, and getting rid of all of my um, cardboard chips. One thing, one thing I, cardboard tokens, all of, all of these, these things. One thing I wanted to do uh, was get rid of all cardboard in the game. Uh, and so that meant, meant like all naval bases, 
all air bases, all factory chips, all, all of that, all that crap. So after acquiring HBG uh, roundels, and you can get these in sets or buy them in sets of 10 or, you know, they have various uh, grab bags of, uh, of roundels for whatever nation you need if you want. Um, after getting all these, I was like, well, and, and just a quick little peek. I do have every Axis game with exception to the original uh, Nova Games one. So I wanted to get a bunch of roundels, but at the same time, I didn't want to buy all my all roundels for all games. And I wanted an easy way to be like, okay, like a storage container where I'm like, okay, I, I can just grab the storage container. I don't have to open one of the boxes to pull out things to play with another game. So this I came up with as just a separate little storage thing. I can grab this and use whatever roundels and use the income tracker for any of the Axis and Allies games that I want to play, uh, you know, when I play them. Obviously nowadays it's been a lot of global in 1914, but I do enjoy a game of anniversary and uh, original Europe, or original Pacific, or, or whatever, uh, D-Day as well. Um, all of them are fun for different reasons, uh, some better than others, obviously, but um, I just wanted to have, you know, so I only had to buy a certain amount of them that I could use with all games, basically. So that was the idea. Um, and at some point I had a light bulb idea and I pulled this box back out and I pulled out whatever adapters or whatever else, whatever else I was using this for. And I came up with this. And as you can see, the roundels fit in here pretty much perfectly. So there's a little bit of wiggle room, you know, um, but, uh, they don't, they don't slide back and forth too much. And so what I did was, uh, I, you know, as you can see, I like options, so... Um, got all the roundels you need for a for most Axis and Allies games. Um, got you got your uh, options of uh, player's choice. Let's say of roundels to use for Germany. Um, we got the classic out of box. We got the forbidden roundels, as I like to call them. <laughs> and uh, we got our forbidden and fascist roundels. And then we got our uh, uh, gray ones that uh, Sire Blood likes to use for uh, 1914, and uh, which is what works for this map. Uh, we got our which this is the out of box map of that Sire Blood made uh, that I printed uh, on a on a um, um, I had it printed on a um, banner, uh, so it's not the greatest quality, but it, it does the job. We got our out of box um, uh, Russia Soviet R Soviet Union roundels, and then the uh, star that uh, um, Sire Blood again likes to use, and the same thing with. Uh, same thing with Italy and Anzac. Italy and uh, Anzac. So we got our out of box. We got our fascist roundel. Uh, side note: It was pretty much only the Air Force that used this. So the Italian Army did not use that. But whatever. Um, and then we got Anzac out of box. We got Sire Blood, um, Anzac. And then we got uh, other chips that you can use in in the game. So we got, we got our capital ship damage chips from HPG. Again, all this is from HPG. Um, uh, these color chips I like to use for damage to factories, so that way it sticks out from the rest, stands out from the rest of the board. Um, in my solo plays, I reuse the red chips to signify it, what units are attacking. If I'm if I'm doing a long distance uh, uh, game with somebody, uh, just just for helping uh, plan out per planning out purposes um, in advance and stuff helps that the turns go fa go faster when you're playing over the phone and stuff like that, or on videos. Uh, and then these chips I got um, originally for the BBR s setup of like, uh, you know, to signify a sub is submerged and to signify a, uh, a, a um, strategic bomber became a uh, uh, air transport. So, uh, but, 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 I've, but I've also reused these. I found alternate ways to use these chips. So I use these in my, in, again, in solo play um, with somebody over the phone. It's not really solo play, but you know, in long distance play. Um, I've used these to signify non-combat, and I've used I've reused these to signify non-combat, and I've reused these to signify where where non-combat or or um, non-combat units are going if I need to, or specifically with um, uh, airplanes. Um, up here, we got uh, this is this this is just um, some again HPG markers to signify like oh there's a you know, there's a battle happening here, you know, I'm gonna attack here, I'm gonna attack here, and then I, you know, pick them off as you resolve it. And that way, you know, you don't uh, accidentally forget something left on the board. Um, as you can see, each nation has a varying amount of chips, and basically just kind of get the, got the gist of 
how many do does a nation actually need. Um, on top of that, each row has a strip of Velcro. And you also have these standard dice in here too, just to help with, you know, uh, bombing raids and things like that. But yeah, there's this, there's Velcro in here. So if you, if I want, let's see, take these out. He's a Spanish uh, nationalist and Republican. So this, these dice that I, I these extra dice, the out of box uh, Axis and Allies dice. So the Axis get red dice, Allies get black dice, uh, re, uh, white dice for expansion stuff, I guess you know. Uh, and and th those were available. Th those were what were available. But as you can see, so there's a little bit of Velcro here to the side of the tape, uh, sorry, side of the uh, die, and then there's a little bit of tape here on the, on the top to attach to a roundel, um, just to kind of be a little marker and stuff, and that way the dice aren't, you know, the roundels aren't sliding back and forth, they're not mixing, and uh, you're, it's not a pain to get them out. Um, and then like these, they're not, they're not sliding back and forth and getting messy with each other, so yeah, so they're just Velcroed in there. China has exactly the amount of um, Chinese roundels that they need, as you can see. Yeah, so that's not going anywhere. They're not shifting. Can put them back in with ease, you know. <laughs> so, so those are the roundels. That's, that's the round, the roundel storage. Then the income tracker up here. These uh, are magnetic. This whole thing here. This, this, these are the only magnets on this board. Um, underneath this surface here, there is, is a uh, ferrous sheet. So it's F E R R um, O U S. So a ferrous sheet, a ferrous material is not magnetic in and of itself, but it's something that magnets adhere to really, really well. Um, so I just got a sheet of that off of Amazon and kind of trimmed it down a little bit, stuck it on here, then threw on some tape. Uh, I also stapled some ribbon to kind of help prop it up. Another idea of that was having it on the table, trying to save as much. Yeah, this game takes up so much space, to, so you want to try and save as much table space as you can. So you can have this off to the side and everybody who's standing up can see it. I kind of want to angle it a little bit more, so I might redo that at some point, but but yeah, so uh, it's a space saver, you know? So you don't have to have the income on the table, you know, it's elevated and uh, less likely to be bumped by um, um, a player or whatever, you know, it's more than likely not going anywhere. This income tracker sheet, um, and I'll include links to all these uh, things that I need that I that I had to uh, uh, get to create this. But this is from HBG. It's an, uh, a global war income tracker, basic one to a hundred. Uh, it's made out of an acrylic material, so you have to carefully trim. I had to carefully trim the top and bottom a little bit just to get it in here because it was a little too tall. Um, it had it says IPP tracker up there. Obviously in this game it's IPC, so I cut that off and I cut off the bottom just to get rid of the. Um, the little copyright there. Sorry guys, but <laughs> just wanted to make it look nice. And uh, so as you can see out of, over here, this is all the out of box roundels over here. This is the um, like BBR and just alternate extra roundels and stuff like that. So we got our Spanish Civil War, we got our Vichy France, Ca Canada, uh, Anzac, um, um, original Pacific Anzac. I just got those recently, so as you, they're not in here yet, but um, I'll find a way to squeeze them in. We got our um, fascist Italy, we got our communist China, uh, working out something to uh, try and incorporate them into the game. Uh, and we got our uh, alternate uh, Russia and Germany roundels there. So these are all magnetic. And uh, they're not to the edges because if they were, then you would have problems with them pushing each other away. And you don't really, but by having the magnets um, not to the edge. If they were like next to each other, they might like cause them, cause them to Push, push away from each other. So you don't want that, you want a little bit of a space. Um, so yeah, just throw those back over there. Um, so yeah, this is my um, uh, World War II Axis and Allies um, income tracker uh, slash storage for roundels. And then ribbons thankfully close, they go in. <laughs> so I must have stapled that one just right. And then on the, t on the bottom here, I also added a little bit of, there's a, some felt, some chair felt little pads so you can slide it on a table without having to worry about it too much. Throw these back in here. Okay. 
Ah, I'll deal with that later. Okay. So, this one is the 19, my 1914 version. So, I decided to uh, uh, create a separate one for 1914, but I didn't need all the, obviously, didn't need all the roundel storage. But one thing 1914 desperately needs uh, is a little side map for um, the Western Front, because this it's, it's so easy to run out of space in the Western Front. So, same basic thing, the exact same thing with a, a ferrous sheet and, uh, and magnetized uh, roundels. Um, and then this, it's the same basic thing, but what I did here, since uh, there's not enough weight on the bottom, and as you can see, this happens. This is kind of what the inside looks like. Oh yeah, there's a battle sheet I threw in there, just for storage. But yeah, so just threw tape all in on the inside. And again, this, uh, these ribbons are stapled in here. So the tape also covers up the staples and kind of makes it a little more pleasant to look at. Um, but yeah, so I took a piece of piece of wood, and then, or actually two pieces of wood. I took two pieces of wood and I took a bunch of gaff tape and taped them together, and then that is enough sufficient weight in here to uh, keep it from flipping. Um, one thing I do want to do is I want to come up with something to put on the other side in, for, a, for, a, for an option, like maybe a tech chart or something like that, um, if, if uh, we don't have a game going where we actually need to use the Western Front, however doubtful that is. But just as a, to be as multifunction as possible, one of these days I'm going to put something on the, on the other side of this. And then this uh, side map is something I got from uh, the Axis and Allies Facebook group, uh, this guy Misha Kessler who runs the page. He uploaded a version of this from somewhere that he got uh, somewhere, and it was very messy. There was all these towns, there was just all this extra information you just didn't need. So there was all these towns, or like rivers, and like all these little subdivisions, and it came very difficult to look at. And actually, the original person forgot uh, this line. Yeah, this red line here was left out of it, so it was flawed. Um, I have a so my friend Rick that I play with is a graphic designer. And uh, uh, when he had time, he actually uh, cleaned this up for me, and uh, I submitted it back to the page, and Misha was very, very happy. Um, uh, and uh, yeah, so it's very clean to look at, and uh, very, very helpful. <laughs> very, very helpful. Highly recommend printing a little side map. Um, and the one problem I got with this one is that this, this one, this ribbon likes to uh, stick out the wrong way. But yeah, so that is, those are my. Axis and Allies cigar boxes, and I'll throw that in there later. Yeah, so you can see the size difference a little bit. This one's a little wider. And as you can see, I'll show you. These are the the uh, uh, cigar sizes, I guess, for the different versions. Let's see, 10, 54, and by 6, 7, 8. 10, 54, 6, 7, 8. Um, so those are the same, I guess they're, the, they're for the same cigars, but this is a more cur current box, and this is a, an older one. Uh, yeah, so. Mm -hmm. Okay. So yeah, that about covers it. Um, talked about it a little longer than I wanted to, but... Uh, Figured, you know, and do making a video for you guys, I might as well be thorough with it. So, um, until later, um, uh, go ahead and customize anything. <laughs> yeah, just uh, get creative and uh, come up, see what. Uh, let's see what you guys come up with or whatever, you know. So, um, if you like the uh, cigar box idea, you know, take a crack at it and come up with something. If you uh, would like to uh, see something done differently, or you have any suggestions or alternate ideas or whatever. Um, you know, let me know in the comments, uh, you know, chime in, and let's get a discussion going on, on, uh, customizations like this. And if you have an idea to, uh, modify it further or anything like that, you know, just let me know, uh, if you have something you would do differently, you know, or, uh, just different ideas, you know, chime in and, um, uh, see if I, I can come up with something else, you know, so, uh, until later, uh, roll the dice better and most importantly, have fun.